Hello and welcome to the Building Sheriff Tips and Tricks Like a Pro. Today we are going to be looking at holes in plasterboard or what the Americans will call drywall. So we've got up here, we've got a small little hole, which is just kind of a, a dent, maybe an elbow or something. Um, something slightly larger down here and a biggie over there. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways of fixing these. So first, the tools that we need, drywall screws, got a, got a uh, cutting knife there, a Stanley knife, tape. Um, now the hammer was for making all the holes and the dustpan and brush was for tidying up because if my wife saw it, she'd go mad. Um, saw and, ah, where is this very useful, a pad saw. I'll show you how we use this later. And filling knives. So first let's deal with this little hole up here. Now this, as you can see, is tiny. It's, it's hardly, hardly like gone through. So you're absolutely fine to just use some normal filler on that. So we're gonna open up, I got some ready mixed, you can use um, knock up yourself. It doesn't make any difference at all. Take a bit on there, don't be shy. We're gonna bring that along and whack that on the hole and scrape off. There you go. And as you can see, let that dry, give it a sand, and then if, if it sinks a little bit, put one more coat on. So how easy was that piece of cake? That's just like any normal filler. So we are gonna look at this hole here. So right, you can get your hand through. If we look around the other side, the timber studs are nowhere near. Basically, we feel like we're fixing into midair. Well, let me show you. So this doesn't have to be perfect, but get my glasses on. So I will create a kind of square. Okay, it doesn't have to be that accurate. Next, we are gonna be using our pad saw. And our pad saw is a very, very useful tool. Look, see in here, it can, it's that pointed end. You can just push into the plasterboard and start cutting. So cut along your line. Okay, and then other way. There we go, we just clean up these edges. There we go, so how are we gonna do this? Now this is a case of using some timber. So I have some here, and what we're going to do is we're going to effectively place timber behind, timber behind, and put plasterboard onto that. So what do we do? We look at the timber, make sure it's about two inches longer than the hole, Take a little pencil and then we do another one of those. There we go. One and one. Okay, we have these cut. We've got two pieces there, and if you just look, they are going to be slightly longer and slightly longer there. So, next, it is drywall screws and your cordless drill. So ideally have a magnetic bit so that it will just stay on regardless. Honestly, they're, 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 they're brilliant. So here we go. We will bring the timber in here and just kind of gauge where it is. You can see it's, it's half on there and half off. And we screw into the top. And then see that we want screw so that the screw goes just slightly below the surface of the paper. That way we can fill over it. And we do the same below. Mind your fingers, just below the surface. That's nice and solid. And then we take the other one, two more screws. And we will do the other side. So let's quick flip around here. So we are going to hold that there. There you go, that pulled in nicely there. And the other one. Put 
There you go, that's pulled in nicely there. Okay, so this is nice and firm. What we need to do now is fill that with some plasterboard. Those of you who have seen my how to use a handsaw video will realize that we can get a right angle there. Mark that. And down here. And mark this. Okay. And the thing with cutting plasterboard is that you can cut down this way and break it, but obviously not that. So I, I saw that. So let's have a quick look. So we go down there, follow the line nice and steadily, hands out of the way. And then just with a saw, an old hand saw. This is an old one. Cut to the line. Then this will break like this. And using your knife, there we go, cut that off. Okay, so let's pop that in. Oh, a bit of a tip here, make sure you clean out any bits of plasterboard because, blow them away, because if you have, for example, I, I'm exaggerating, but if you had something like that, then obviously the plasterboard wouldn't go, go back properly and this would be proud. So let's put this in. There we go. Have a look there. Okay, now to fix it, a screw there. Okay, nice and gently. Okay, not too much, because you're near the edge of the plasterboard, so you don't want to push in too much, because it'll crack the plasterboard out to the side. There we go. That's absolutely great. I'm going to do I'm going to put a couple at the side, one there and one there, just for luck. You're filling anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. No. And more. Obviously, I've got my hand around the back, but right, anyway. Okay, now because we've got timber and plasterboard together, they have different thermal properties. If you think about um, timber will expand and contract, plasterboard's fairly inert, it won't. So if your timber starts expanding and contracting in summer and winter, it'll mean that we'll, it'll, it'll put stress on the joint, so we'll have some cracks. So what do we use? Scrim tape. Um, scrim tape is a mesh, and it's slightly sticky, and this is how you put it on. Just um, hold it in place, stick it down, and then Stanley knife across the top, and then one across here. One across here. Doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's covering the joint. There you go. And what happens is this mesh has a real high tensile strength. And so if this tries to pull apart, it won't allow it. Moving together is fine, that won't crack, but pulling apart, if the, if the timber expands, this mesh won't allow it. So now we've got the mesh, it's time for the filler. So let's Grab some of this, put it onto my bigger knife, and, and then let's apply it on here. There we go. Not too hard. Okay, and we're going to have to do a couple of these. Take a bit more. Beautiful. So, that needs to be left to dry and then sanded down. Oh look, there's a bit of mesh showing. Fine, sanded down, edges feathered in. Don't keep, I mean, I sometimes spend forever doing this. Just let it dry, sand it, and then put a thin coat over the top and Bob's your uncle. Right then, that's done, that's done. What about this humongous, great, horrible hole here? Similar job. To before however what we've got is if you can follow these screws we've got the studs either side now a fairly standard measurement you're going to clean this up and you're going to find the studs but just to let you know a fairly standard measurement between studs is either 400 millimeters or 16 inches so you can kind of gauge where the studs are so let's clean this one up take the knife get the big bits off 
There you go, that's there. Okay, and again, I'm going to use the pad saw. And what I'm going to do, and we'll probably see on the reverse shot, is I'm going to, I'm going to saw in until we hit the stud timber. So, <laughs> saw, oh, we've hit it there. So I know it's there. So that's my mark. I'm going to go slightly higher. Oh, and that's my mark. Okay, now let's take the level. Grab the level, and we are going to cut down that line, which will then be the edge of the timber. So there to there. Nice sharp, Stanley. These don't last too long when cutting plasterboard. Cut down the line there. There we go. And we're just going to break it off like that. And we're going to take the Stanley knife down here. Again, mind your fingers. These are very sharp and very dangerous. Okay, clean that up. Clean that up. And then we're going to do the same for here. Go to the edge of the timber and along the top, we're just going to create a straight line. Let's get on with that. So again, pencil. I'm happy to eye this. You can get your level out if you like and measure. That's there. And we are going to go above there. What do you think, dogs? Good. Yep. No disagreement from the DIY dogs. So I think we are on to a winner here. So I'm going to follow this up. So I'm following the line of the timber. Here I'm going to find the timber, which is all the way over here, right at that end. And again, I'm going to come along, find the timber, come down with the Stanley knife again. Put that back, that's very nice. And then Stanley down there. There we go. And if you can see, we're, we're nicely on the line of the timber there. Back to the pad saw. And up we go. There we go. Nice big hole. We are going to go back to the timber again now. Measure so that it's just slightly longer, which is there. And I'll just cut, right, I'll cut two of these. I'll be back in a second. Here we go, two bits of timber. And then these are going to be fixed against the studs there. So we're effectively, we're extending the stud. There we go. So that's another dry one. Another one. And a third. And I'm going to put this one over on the other side, same way. I'm just slightly concerned about these bits. So they're picked up, that plasterboard will be picked up, that will be picked up, but that's quite a flex. So I'm going to cut another bit of timber and another bit of timber there. And this is going to combine this first method whereby the timber is going to be sat across here. It'll be supported by this and it'll be held by the timber there. And there we go. We're cutting to three, two, five and three, two, five. Back now, we've had a minor disaster. The camera went off, so I've just got back in, going to edit the video, but the camera's off, so I've had to take this out again. But anyway, it's the bit I cut, and we are now going to put it into the hole, get it the right way up. There we go, same process as before, I'm just getting a bit messier. And then let's get this screwed in.
and don't worry if there's some little gaps there because like before we're going to scrim tape that and it will give it'll be filled man i've just about to take the dogs for a walk as well maybe sitting patiently whilst i've been doing this Great, okay, just to scrim tape. So let's get our scrim and our knife, same as before. Oh, it will stick if it drops. There we go. There we go. Just overlapping the edges like before. Stick it down. There we go. Okay, now we are ready for filling. Second time for me, first time for you guys. So let's take our filler. Nice big dollop. Onto my big spatula. You can use a small one. I find the bigger spatula a lot easier. Even a plastering trowel will do. And over we go. And there we go. So it's a case of you're now doing a decorating job really rather than repair plastering job. So get a first coat on. It can be pretty rough. Get it all sanded down. Let that dry and then put your second coat on nice and smooth. Bob's your uncle ready to paint. Anyway, so we've done our small hole, slightly bigger hole and huge hole. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's helped you. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next time.